The electrification of the mainstream automobile has reached an interesting stage. The gasoline electric hybrid concept is still dominated by Toyota's competent but boring Prius. Meanwhile, ask somebody to name an EV and they're likely to say Tesla, thanks to that company's exciting product and excellent branding. Even now, in its second generation, the Chevy Volt isn't nearly so well understood or recognized. And that's a shame, because the EV sedan with its confidence-inspiring gasoline-powered generator incorporates some of the best aspects of both Tesla and Prius. How does it look? Chevy designers turned in sleeker, more conventional-looking sheet metal for this Volt redesign. The angular nose and blocky rear end of the original version have been replaced with a more flowing and aerodynamic look, though I think the car is less instantly recognizable now than it was before. It looks like it could easily be a Honda or a Hyundai if you strip the bow tie off the front. How's the storage? The magic of the Volt comes from its big battery pack. Of course, that same battery pack does crimp cargo capacity a bit. So the trunk of the Volt has got less room than a Chevy Cruze would have, as an example. That said, the space will easily accommodate two standard size carry-on bags or one of our larger suitcase. And the hatchback opening provides a little bit more flexibility than a hardtop trunk would. In the cabin, you'll find an average array of cup holder and stash space. The storage under the armrest is nice to have, as is the easily accessible bin in front of the gear lever. Is it roomy? Tall guys like me will find plenty of room in the cockpit and enough seat and steering wheel adjustment to make a comfortable driving position. The back seats are really small though and uncomfortably divided in the middle. This is more of a space for small adults or kids than for big dudes. How does the interior feel? Now, anybody familiar with the first generation Volt will see that the garish white center stack is gone and things have calmed down in here considerably. It's very black, but it's a conservative design that I think will age fairly well. The cabin is so brightly lit, comfortable, and quiet that I'm less bothered with the slightly tacky bits like the electric blue cap on the shift lever. The car meets the standard of today's good mid-sizer cabins, like Accord and Mazda 6, though it really should for this sticker price. Is it well equipped? I'm driving the premier trim level of the Volt, and it doesn't lack for bells or whistles. All four leather seats are heated, as is the steering wheel. How's the infotainment system? Chevy's MyLink system features lovely graphics and a good touchscreen, and the geeky driving data that's available is deep and entertaining. As with every EV, the stereo system doesn't have to work hard to sound really good, since the silent car is a better stage than something with a conventional engine. Is it a good daily driver? Chevy specifies more than 50 miles per charge, and even in cold Michigan weather, I've been seeing more than 40 miles on a fully charged battery. Of course, using the Volt as an electric vehicle makes it more efficient than a hybrid. But the cool thing about the system is that there's also a 1.5 liter gasoline engine involved. So when your battery runs dry, the gas engine kicks on and you can just keep going, eliminating range anxiety. On the other hand, I don't love the overall level of visibility in the car. Forward is okay, but the super thick rear pillars make it difficult when you're changing lanes or negotiating in parking spaces. I really have had to rely on the backup camera in a lot of situations where I'm in parking lots, uh, just because I can't see the rear three quarters view. Is it fun to drive? It's surprisingly fun, in fact. When you put the accelerator down, you get a full boot of electric motor torque, meaning that from a standstill or when making a pass on a highway, merging on a ramp or something like that, you just get a ton of power. In terms of handling, uh, the Volt actually feels surprisingly good, partially because all that weight of the battery is down very low, uh, so the center of gravity is also low, which makes it feel planted in corners. Now, when you get really to the extreme edge of that handling envelope, you're still talking about low rolling resistance tires and a very understeery, numb experience, so it's not exactly a sports car. But you can have a few thrills if you're trying. How's the fuel economy? I didn't try very hard to drive cautiously and was able to use just 1.98 gallons of gas to go 123 miles over the last few days. Granted, my local downtown area has free charging stations that I was able to use, but that's still massively efficient. If you have a short commute and a 240 volt charging station handy, you'll almost never need gas. How much is it? 
The price question is more complicated with this car than with most. A base Volt starts about $35,000, and the car I'm in has an MSRP over $41,000. However, you can get a federal tax credit of $7,500, which obviously makes the out-the-door number a lot more palatable for most people. It's also fair to note that, for optimal use, you'll want to have access to the charging station in your garage or near your dwelling. The prices of these are coming down, but you can still easily spend over $1,000 buying the unit and having it installed. What are the negatives? While the Volt has clear advantages over a traditional hybrid or an EV, there are definitely some downsides. Number one is still the price of the technology. You're gonna pay for it at the dealership and you're gonna pay for it again when you try and bring the charging station back into your home garage. And on a space per dollar index, the packaging demands of the Voltec powertrain are fairly limiting. You're gonna feel it every time you try and load up the trunk or load up the back seats. Who should buy it? I think anybody in the market for a hybrid should at least put the Volt in their consideration set. Especially if you have a pretty short commute, if you have easy access to public charging, or if you are really concerned about tailpipe emissions. If you guys liked our Why Buy video on the Chevy Volt, you should definitely subscribe to our channel, find us on Facebook and Twitter, generally follow along.